this year marks the 10 year anniversary of the Heroes of Loot. Heroes of Loot 1 was released in September 2013. I will never forget that date because I've talked about this a few times on the channel. That game, I was making that game in my home office while we were renovating our complete house, pretty much. So there were workers everywhere, dust every day, a lot of sound and noise and hammering and sawing and drilling and meantime I was working on a little game that then turned out to be I think still my biggest hit game not a massive hit like everybody knows about it but a lot of people played this game and know about it now I happened to start on a new little project a few weeks ago and I wasn't really thinking about the fact that this game turned uh, 10 years this year but yeah it happened that I am now working on Heroes of Loot 3 10 years after the first game. That's just a coincidence. When I started working on this new title, I pretty much just grabbed a lot of Heroes of Loot graphics. I knew I wanted to do something in like a dungeon type setting. So this was the easiest thing to do. Um, it's also the way um, I love how Nintendo does it. They created a couple of characters and been building this whole world around it. And then pretty much in every game you can just grab from all the ideas you already had in previous games and build on top of that so that's what i'm doing with this game i'm grabbing the heroes improving them a little bit uh, grabbing all the different enemy types so there are skulls there are imps there are minotaurs all those things already exist in the heroes of loot world so it makes it for me a lot easier to come up with those type of ideas so the game has been getting into a development that's been extremely quickly a very short development cycle and it's now at a certain point that the demo is actually interesting and fun to play. And so this week my focus was on getting the Steam page up already. I mean, if you look at the time I spent on this game, I think we're like maybe one month in development, maybe not even a month, and I'm already starting up a Steam page. So when should you start a Steam page? Is that a good idea? Why am I doing it now? What's the purpose of it? After the intro. So there are a couple of reasons why you should get your Steam store page up and running as quickly as possible. This has been mentioned on many sites, but for those that still don't know, here are uh, three good reasons to have that done as soon as possible. As soon as you get something to show, get your Steam page up there. So the first one is the most obvious one, um, to have a good launch on Steam or on PC, but to be honest, if you're launching games on PC, it's on Steam. That's the 99% of the market, 99% of their gamers will be on Steam, have an account on Steam, and those that don't are just either being stubborn for some weird reason or not really that much of a gamer. Uh, for those, there's Itch, Humble, GOG, Epic Game Store, and a bunch of others, but Steam is pretty much your go-to place. So getting that Steam page up means you can start collecting wish lists, and that's important because for a very good launch on Steam, you need a lot of wish lists. Um, not so much that that makes your game uh, a success because it doesn't. A wish list isn't a sale. A wish list is an interest from people or a friendly nudge from friends who might not actually buy your game but are just there to wish list you and give you a thumbs up. Like it's like a social light or a heart or whatever. Uh, but if you breach a certain threshold, 7,000 wish lists is the minimum. They say they say uh, to have a good launch um, pretty much what happens is once you get a certain amount of wish list 7000 but preferably thousands of more you get higher up in a certain ranking when your game launches the new and upcoming games the new games or the new releases that's pretty much decided and dictated by wish list uh, among a few other things like um, if you gain four or five thousand wish lists just a couple of days before release that certainly does something to your uh, situation as well that will really boost you and help you so there are more things that play into it but the key thing is have enough wish lists um, you can still make a great hit game if you have like four or five thousand wish lists because it's also going to be compared to the other games that release the same period so if you can uh, get to seven or eight thousand wish lists and can find a certain time spot that not a lot of in not a lot of big hype titles are releasing as well you could still make it up to a good list and gain a lot of attention from that of course the sales will still depend a lot on 
your ratings uh, and what players think about your game. If you have a sucky game, but you have 200,000 wish lists, it will not end very well, uh, but it will have a nice, interesting start and then a lot of refunds, probably. So wish list is just a very important thing on Steam. And that's why you want to get that page up and running as soon as possible and then show everybody the page and point everybody towards that page so that they can wishlist and follow and give some interest to the game and help you in the algorithm. That's a very good reason to have a Steam page up as soon as you got stuff to show. Now a second reason to have your Steam page up and running there is um, you don't need a website then and you can just have that Steam page be your billboard for marketing but events um, especially because a lot of digital events like steam next fest is the most known but it's done by steam but there are also other events that sometimes get a front page mention or a banner on the steam page and those are bigger events and you get get and you can get into those events by just submitting your game and hope that they accept it and will uh, help you out and Pretty much for that, you need a Steam page up and running again to gain those wish lists, but also those events work a lot with Steam because as I mentioned before, Steam is like 99% of the PC game market. Everybody is tying into it and connecting to it and everything uh, leads back to Steam. So having that page up there uh, will help you with a lot of marketing. Also talking about your game on social media and you have something to point people towards. It's fun to talk about your game. You can do a tweet like, look what I'm making, although Twitter might not last very long. You can do a TikTok post, although TikTok might not last very long or be everywhere. You, Facebook is that's the, you could do a social media post and then mention your game, show a couple of nice videos or screenshots. And then what? You need to point people towards something. Steam page. That's the easiest thing to have. And also you can then hopefully gain a lot of wish lists because people interested will click that button and you will then be able to reach them as soon as your game releases. People that put your game on a wish list will also get an email as soon as it launches. So it's like a newsletter, a press kit, a website, and if you want a developer log. Let's get to point number three, why you should start a Steam page as soon as possible. The third reason is having a demo. Um, it's not required, but of course you do need a Steam page if you want to have a demo available. So for that reason, you should set up a Steam page so that you can have a demo. Um, a demo isn't required, but a lot of digital events, um, well, they do require you to have something playable. So either a release version, early access version, or a demo. Um, and I think I'm noticing a little shift from developers using early access where a player has to pay for the privileges of early access to your game um, and that shift is moving a little bit to having a demo there while you're still developing the game and i've been doing that with Rayleigh the city i have a demo there updating it every few months um, and i noticed that gives a boost to my wish list every time i have a new demo and people will uh, actually give me feedback on it instead of having to pay for it and then i need to make sure that the game is perfect and bug free. Right now the demo is playable, it's great. It's not bug free and people will know that, most people. Um, I think that's interesting to have a demo there while you're working on the game and then get a lot of feedback from them. Um, instead of just your own little bubble or friends that tell you, your game is awesome, amazing, you're making games, yay. But they're not really testing your game, they just play it and let you know that hey it's cool that you're doing this we're moving on with our lives now yeah that might just be my friends anyway having that steam page up and then having a demo on it makes talking about your game a lot easier you can just mention your game on even things like reddit and then have uh, them play and then have the game playable so it's not just promoting your stuff or talking about your stuff but those people actually get something in return a playable version of that game and that's interesting, uh, and that's, I think, a good thing to have. But opinions on that might differ depending on who you ask. Uh, the upside of that is you can also use your Steam page as a uh, developer log type thing. Post updates there every now and then, or when you have a new demo, or post about what you're working on, and then you can hopefully maybe create a little community before the game launches. That's, um, that's a lot of important things to have. If you have a good big community before the game launches and then the game goes live, that community will be on there, will already be there, will already have a lot of knowledge, will already know where the game came from as you developed it with them or they watched it 
develop from nothingness to something cool. And there have been a couple of years where a demo wasn't really interesting because there's so many games out there. And I personally think we're moving back to that as, as something valid for at least smaller game developers, smaller studios with smaller games, um, gain some interest and already show other people what you're working on. I think it's a good thing. But again, it might differ depending on what type of game you're making and all that stuff. But um, I'm doing a demo. So that's the why of creating Steam page. Now the how is, it's not that difficult. Um, you pay Steam or Valve $100 to get an app idea. Um, and that pretty much allows you to create a new page for a new game. That $100 is recoupable uh, by your first couple of sales. Although I don't think the math works out completely. So instead of giving Valve 30% of that, uh, of your first revenue, you get full 100% until you recoup the $100, which it's still a bit weird how it works. But it, for now, that's how it works. You have no say over it, so just go with it. And beside the $100, I need artwork. I like to have marketing assets that are high resolution instead of my pixel art. I just think it looks better promotion and marketing wise. So a few weeks ago on this channel, I asked if people were interested in doing artwork for it and could do it. Um, before, the day before that video went live, Adriano LaRusso mailed me and this is his ArtStation page. Um, if I'm looking for artists, I usually go to ArtStation or one of those type of sites where a lot of artists have their digital art up and they uh, will show you what they can create, what types and what genres and all that stuff. So we had a little back and forth on the email. I told him what I was, what, what I wanted. Um, my original idea was very simple. The Heroes of Loot, like they were, the original artwork for Heroes of Loot 1, these guys, uh, but more mature. Like, so imagine these original guys were toddlers and were now teenagers. And I wanted them a bit more mature and more gritty, ready for a fight, ready for a rumble. Um, think they can take on the whole world which of course they can't because they barely know what they want in life a little bit like that so he came with a couple of uh, sketches for the elf uh, we picked one and combined it with the face of another one and then we ended up with well this cool artwork which are now obviously it's still the heroes of loot the main characters they're very recognizable um, but in a more mature setting a very different style from the original but um, I really like the cool artwork and the result is just awesome. It's a unique style, it's very interesting. So I set out to create a logo for the game. Um, then Tim Conceivable, a regular on the Discord, help on the Discord if you want to become a regular and be mentioned in my videos every now and then. Um, he came up with a subtitle, A Gauntlet of Power, which is amazing and brilliant actually. You're brilliant, Tim. Uh, it's a little nod to Gauntlet, the original uh, 80s arcade game that I based my Heroes of Loot on. Uh, and then of Power, Gauntlet of Power, because you're pretty much uh, shooting in eight directions almost automatically and to explain that we can now just reference the gauntlet you're wearing gauntlet it's shooting in eight directions you can mount new weapons on it and that's the gauntlet of power title done subtitle done um, i started out to create a bunch of capsules banners uh, larger images uh, screenshots and all that stuff that needs to go on steam and it's kind of boring to work on all those things actually um I did a couple of those things twice because I then changed the logo fonts a little bit here and there. So I actually did most of those things twice, but now they're up there. It's a first iteration. I might change them or upgrade them or update them or improve them or whatever in a couple of months just to see if it changes the amount of wish list and also it keeps the game fresh. So people that learn to ignore this capsule image of Heroes of Loot might certainly see another image and that might spark their interest again and there will be a new demo up when they get this new spark they may try it again and then i might convert them into wishlist um so that's pretty much been my week setting up a steam page now that leaves us with one final question um how much did all of this cost setting up steam page as just mentioned hundred dollars to valve i paid a few hundred dollars i'm not talking specifics because it's actually his fee, Adriano, the, the artwork. Um, so I'm a couple of hundred dollars um, in the negative now, not counting the time I've spent on developing the games. But um, yeah, this is just very important. And from now on, I can start accumulating wish lists and I can also start putting Heroes of Loot in digital events alongside Regulated City. So now I have two games that I want to put into as many events as possible. 
it's gonna be interesting to juggle those things uh, but I'll have to keep thinking about the different events and which game would fit there if you can only enter one game it's gonna be regulated city because that game has been a lot more expensive than a few hundred dollars to make uh, but if I can enter two games or if only Heroes of Loot fits an event I now have those options um, I'm not planning on releasing the game this year. It would of course be amazing if I do, because it is actually a decade after the original, but I don't want to uh, rush it and I want to just um, have it up there so that I have something in 2024 to get that year going in revenue. And usually I'm working on a game and that has to be released in that same year to make money. And now I'm in this weird situation where I can actually delay this game, have it up and done even if, for example, if I have it completed in September, I can just have it sit there, accumulate wish list, and then release it later and the year after that. I will probably be working on another project by then. It's a weird situation, but it's a very good situation and I need to make the most of that. So that's the final reason that I already set up this team page. Um, by the time this video goes live, I aim to have a demo ready and playable for you. So besides checking out Steam page for wishlisting it, because that's what you're gonna do, of course, you're my friend, you're gonna wishlist it, no matter if you're gonna play it or not, wishlist it. But there might also be a demo. If it's not there as this video goes live, it will be there pretty soon, because that's my next goal. As mentioned, these events will need a demo or something playable, so I need to make sure there's something playable, something good, something solid, um, not, too big, not too buggy, and something that is already uh, giving you good vibes on what the game is going to be. So there should be a demo live. Please let there be a demo live. Okay, so I now have to stop this video and start working on the demo or else it's not going to happen. So thanks for watching. Of course, jump on the Discord, come hang out, come talk about this game, the other games, talk about business, talk about games, talk about TV series, movies, everything that we all enjoy. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.